Good afternoon all and thanks for joining us. If you're looking for Zora's live customer webinar on the secrets of reducing the subscription churn in partnership with HTK Horizon, you are in the right place. My name is Geraldine Rizzo, I'm your host today and I head up the marketing function for Europe, the Middle East and Africa. Now let me introduce you to our panelists today. We have Mr. John Cassidy, who is the director at Zora and a specialist of the subscription economy and software as a service with a wealth of experience in the industry. John, welcome. We are also honored and grateful to have our customer, Mr. Justin Bowser from HDK Horizon as a panelist. And to give you just a little bit of background about Justin, he's passionate about content marketing, the convergence of social, local, mobile technology, and the sort of social psychological effects that today's marketing and customer service technology can have on consumer behavior. A technologist at heart, Justin started the tech sector with British Telecoms in 1987 before moving to HTK to grow the company from scratch into a multi-million pound business with his twin brother Marlon. He holds a first class degree in cognitive science from the University of Sheffield. Justin, welcome. John, um, it's now over to you. Would you like to start with an overview of who we are and what we do as a company? Yes, you can uh, roll forward. Firstly, um, welcome everyone and thanks for giving up your uh, Thursday lunchtime. Um, Essentially, what I wanted to really to do today is really major on, on HTK and, and Justin's business. Um, it's a really interesting business that they run, especially when you look at how they deal with other companies. Churn, and obviously the, the nature of today's uh, webinar is really that. So essentially, I'm not going to read the slides. Zora, we've been around four years. We've seen over 500 net new monetization strategies across a number of different sectors. Really, really strong team that come from the likes of PayPal and WebEx, as well as Salesforce and, and NetSuite, as you can see. We're well back, and, and really this year is about pushing into, into Europe in a, in a much bigger way as well as um, Asia Pac. So that kind of gives you a snapshot of, of who we are, and really subscription economy are the two words that we use to define it. So if you can roll forward. So, I mentioned subscription economy. You know, the way that we view the world and the way that the world has gone now, the economy is the subscription economy. And it's not just about, it's no longer about rather closed rates and gross margins. It's about renewal rate and it's about the relationship that you have with, a, with your customers. And it's about moving the customers to the center of the discussion as opposed to just treating them as how many units can I sell them, what's my gross margin, and what special product features can I roll out. Sophisticated pricing and packaging creates a significant amount of complexity, and a lot of organizations that we see, including HTK, are using pricing and packaging to differentiate in a really competitive market. Fair to say, Justin, right? Correct. We are, yes. You can move on, Jeremy. Okay, and as I'm sure you guys, a lot of you guys that are involved in, in staff, um, fully aware that legacy technology really doesn't understand subscription. It's, it's essentially not just about, you know, enterprise resource planning and general ledger and, and payment processing. It's great to be efficient. But it's really that move of the customer straight to the center of the, of the argument and the relationship that you have with them is really, really critical. And as you'll see from, from Justin's um, slide, they absolutely here at HTK put the customer right at the center of every conversation. And in fact, they're in a fortunate position because they put other people's customer at the front of the conversation in terms of churn reduction. You can roll, you tell me. So when we talk about um, churn, the, the, the potential impact of churn on the business, as everyone will know in the room, is significant. When we talk about annuity, if we look at business to business sales, you know, one representative making three hundred thousand dollars in a quarter. In, in, in ACV is if you look at the annuity in the compound growth there, suddenly in year four, just by doing the same thing, the, the, the numbers are you know, significantly improved and a lot better. So 
by moving the customer to the centre of the equation and really looking at how you reward them and your renewal rates and really understand the impact of churn. It can have a significant impact really on your business. And as the next slide will show, you know, you can put a, a pound or a dollar value to that. Um, so you can see that the, the, the net impact there is significant. You know, the bottom graph there shows essentially what you're getting, and obviously the blue bar is showing you the opportunity cost, or therefore the loss to the business, and the impact that churn really, really can have on your business. So what would be good now is, is I'd like to hand over to, to, to Justin so he can give you um, really a, a view of the real world in terms of, of churn, and as well as giving you an overview of what HTK do and how they do it more importantly. Okay, thanks, John. Okay, so a little bit first of all about who we are. Uh, HTK is a, uh, a SaaS company, so we've been around about 15 years historically dealing with some large enterprise customers uh, around their multi-channel lifecycle marketing. So customers like O2, uh, for whom we do inbound uh, marketing voice automation services. Uh, Centrica, who we do mainly actually outbound multi-channel, things like uh, engineer appointment reminders and customer service automation. Uh, the Metropolitan Police, uh, where we're looking at police public uh, community engagement. Uh, SEPA, Scottish Environment Agency, uh, around some of their national uh, projects around floods. And also moving now down into uh, smaller retailers like Urban Vintage. And where we've moved to on our journey over the last couple of years is turning our technology into a SaaS product, which can be licensed and packaged in different ways and also bringing that to market as a pure SaaS play on a subscription charging model, uh, going right down to uh, the SMB market at around about £50 per month for the software, where again we need to be very, very efficient in terms of how we uh, manage those uh, ongoing uh, functions like invoicing and uh, subscription management. So, a question, um, Justin, is it, is it fair to say that moved from the old economy, which was all assisted selling heavy lifting from a sales perspective. And really, you know, that move into the in, in, into SaaS has kind of helped you with that web-assisted sale or unassisted sale within a web environment. Oh, completely. So we, we had been planning for a while to go into a SaaS and web sales. And again, I was working with some ex-colleagues of mine from BT who've done this for people like uh, Gumtree. And... Uh, the first impressions we have with Zora compared to the old ways, again, of just moving into subscriptions is that uh, going to Zora probably took at least six months off our time to market. Uh, but we, we couldn't have uh, achieved what we have without Zora. And where we came from was at best quarterly, often annual, manual invoicing. I think we just couldn't scale the business uh, carrying on down that route. And the impact on the back office, Justin, for you must have been significant without Zora, you create that, that heavy lifting. In a lot of cases, we hear from our customers that do go live um, that literally it's, it's, it's break the back office or... or oh, we, we, were, we were working from spreadsheets, uh, as I guess many people in our situation were and still are, and uh, it uh, works for a while, but again, you just don't get any management information now like that, and it's, uh, it's, it's painful to scale. So if we can roll forward, Geraldine, um, it'd be good to just be good to hear from you in terms of really what your what your challenge is and, and, and was and how you made that transition. Yeah. So so Horizon is a fairly comprehensive SaaS product. It is very functional in different ways, and so we need to go right from enterprise deals where we're mainly working on things like IVR and contact center uh, integration right down to the SMB side who are looking more at things like their email marketing and mobile marketing. Uh, and we need, therefore, to package Horizon and the product features in lots of different ways to address those different, uh, different market sizes and also potentially different verticals uh, as well. So we really needed to have a subscription billing platform that would let us have some real agility in how we package uh, Horizon and how we repackage it and how we can very quickly learn which uh, packaging and which pricing is working, which isn't, and, and adapting our business accordingly. So, I mean, pricing and packaging is, is key um, 
for you guys and the ability to look at add-ons and look at upgrades. Obviously, I've had the benefit of seeing the system and how you use it. It seems to be that you've really cracked the way that you, you, know, you get people on board with the free trial that you use that mechanism premium and then clearly have a great upsell strategy and actually reward them straight from the initial relationship. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we, we do go through from a, uh, I mean, we're, we're British. We British don't like giving out our credit card details uh, until we need to. Uh, so we offer a completely free uh, trial, uh, first of all. Uh, but then we move someone into a, yeah, a, a kind of a, 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 a ladder, a value chain where we can start them on a basic product uh, and then very much geared around offering add-on add-on modules and functionality. So as the product grows, or as the customer's needs grow, they can take the parts they want, pay as they go, uh, not take the parts they don't, and we can give them some very clear uh, things like invoicing mm -hmm. around you know, the features they've got. So it's a very, very flexible model we wanted to give our customers, choosing which parts of the product the platform they take or which they don't. Great. So in terms of life cycle, mar life cycle marketing, um, It'd be interesting to, to get your view because that's pretty much the, the business that you're in. Yeah, okay. So if we roll forward, Jeremy. Okay, so I think we Okay, so if we go to if we go to the Yeah, so so okay, we'll we'll come back to really what uh, Horizon is doing in a while. But what what we've done uh, for this webinar is I've been talking to our customers, uh, some of our teams, uh, and, and also just what I've learned personally around what are the challenges around reducing churn and increasing loyalty. Um, and I've got to think about nine points here. Uh, I wanted to keep it below 10. Um, just what are the common themes uh, that both we and our customers have adopted to uh, tackle this challenge? So first off, um, Setting the foundations for a good customer experience. Uh, I think this comes down to putting the technology to one side and really looking at the business attitude towards its customers. So it's about not trying to sell to your customers all the time. It's about having an open two-way dialogue, uh, letting them know what you're up to, uh, trying to engage with them through different channels. And when you do engage uh, with them on uh, maybe some, some marketing, uh, making sure the content's good and it's targeted properly. So uh, there's nothing worse than, than spam or as you know, you maybe uh, take a, a product from a, a company and then the next week you're receiving an email offer from them for uh, the next version up of that product, which is a bit better still and for less money. There's nothing uh, worse than that to take someone from feelings of um, uh, feeling good about a brand to uh, uh, getting pretty cheap stuff. So making sure the content is targeted, timely, relevant, engaging. And also, this is a key thing that came through from, from our customers, and again, the attitude from our service desk as well, is just don't let your customers down as a mantra ever. Um, so start with that kind of goal in mind and that attitude towards customer service. And if you're doing that, then there are some tools you can use to uh, cope with the humps and bumps along the way where things do go a little bit wrong. So would, it be, would it be safe to say that essentially if you get that foundation set correctly at the very beginning of the relationship and the customer centricity is, you know, is, is, is everything that you focus on, then the chances are that you're not going to get it wrong. And if you do get it wrong, then it's about essentially how you deal with that process. Yeah, completely. So it really comes down to customer experience management. and. Uh, Depending on which analyst you talk to, some will say this is technology. I disagree with that. It is all about end-to-end -end across your business and across all touch points, getting the right customer-centric attitudes in place. Uh, if you can do that in the hearts and minds of your uh, staff and your management team, then technologies like Horizon can really help, but uh, the technology is only a part of the puzzle. Great. Thanks, Justin. Okay, so, so next thing you need to do is to start looking, okay, well, how are we going to measure this? How are we going to realize when things maybe are going well or not going so good? Um, so getting an understanding for your business of how you can measure uh, loyalty and value. So 
one of the things we're looking at is in much the same way as the all the marketing automation companies who are interested in customer acquisition. Well, we're into customer retention as well. Uh, and those, the guys in that, on the marketing automation look at things like lead scores. So based on uh, people's behaviors and actions and what they download and so on, they can increment and decrement a, uh, a lead score to decide when to pass a lead off to sales. Well, we look at uh, a similar thing here around loyalty. And again, I think each business will have its own idea of how you want to uh, capture and, and quantify loyalty, but it's important uh, that you do. And then also that you understand for your business what the relationship is between loyalty and value. So maybe looking at uh, on one side whether a customer is uh, customers are low or high in terms of their overall loyalty. Maybe on a separate axis looking at are they a low or high value customer to your business based on maybe monthly recurring revenue figures. Uh, and looking at things like, you know, what percentage of your revenue uh, comes from your high loyalty, um, high value customers? Uh, how much of your revenue right now comes from customers you categorize as being low loyalty? So understanding, you know, what the sensitivity of your business is to, to loyalty um, and making sure you have some metrics so you can start applying some uh, decision making to address that. So, you, so Justin, you've mentioned MRR or monthly recurring revenue here. Um, obviously, there's a whole bunch of analytics, which, given your ecosystem and Azura analytics engine as well, are you saying it's about knowing why you're successful and keeping customers because you know that the customers that you want to keep? Yeah, it is. It is. It's about um, understanding absolutely your business and your customers. And it may be that uh, you, you look and you find that you're actually spending a lot of time servicing uh, customers at low value, uh, which for some businesses, you may take a decision that uh, that isn't something I want to do. Other businesses, again, based on trends, and we'll come on to trends in a second, is understanding what the uh, potential is to grow those customers, uh, both up the value chain and also up the loyalty uh, chain, uh, to get them to be more valuable to your business. But really getting an understanding of that. And, and how do you, in Blankford, obviously the guys at Dodd, and how, how do you view the kind of analytic, analytics engine that obviously is part of your ecosystem, obviously with Zora and Salesforce? Yeah, so we, we have the, uh, the uh, pretty nice closed loop here on uh, if someone will sign up for Horizon online, uh, that information on their subscription goes into Zora, including the, the base product, and we have uh, an ability in our Zora, uh, we're using some custom field data to um, offer those customers add-on products which are eligible to based on the, the base Horizon subscription they have. So we store a whole bunch of information about someone in detail and the parts of Horizon they are subscribing to. Uh, all that information then gets fed into salesforce.com and uh, actually right now our, our reporting comes from, from a mix. Some of our um, more day-to-day -day business reporting uh, comes from Zora, uh, but uh, really in terms of then understanding things like what the value, where the value is coming from, we again use a lot of the Salesforce reporting to look at uh, recurring revenues and value and, and churn and uh, so on, really based on the split of uh, the product holdings and which aspects of Horizon someone has. And, uh, so we use Salesforce and Zora pretty much hand in hand. Great. Thanks, Geraldine. Yeah, so this, this um, comes back to that. Uh, again, talking to our customers here, uh, again, particularly across telco, um, it's an area where, where we found that on the whole, if you can increase the product holdings that a subscriber has, on the whole, there is less risk of churn. It doesn't necessarily work um, for all industries, uh, and again, you need to make sure there isn't too much overlap uh, between the different product holdings, otherwise you can get confusion in your customers, so it's important to be very clear with them on what your packaging is, what features they have, and again, which ones they, they need compared to what they um, think they need. Uh, but on the whole, um, if you can increase the product holdings someone has, whether they're ones they're paying for or just additional free things you give them, they are less likely to churn. This is one of the reasons why, again, when someone signs up for Horizon, they buy a base product on a monthly subscription, and then we offer them a bunch of add-ons, some of which are free. But we could have just bundled all of that into the product. Uh, we chose not to. 
just to kind of reinforce to someone, both at the point of, of, of purchase and also on the monthly invoicing, just remind them of all the different value that we give them as a customer. So product holding is important. The second thing to do on the whole, if you can, and this is something which I guess there's always risk that it can slip when businesses are under, under pressure and down pressure on resources, but it's to build up a little bit of what we call a goodwill pot. So it's once in a while um, just giving someone something extra, whether it's just a, a different offer, which you're, you're just out of the blue giving to them to maybe thank them for uh, their continued business, or whether it's on the contact center or a service desk, just going the extra mile with them to help them out. But just doing that once in a while uh, across your customers um, can help to mitigate issues when things go wrong. And again, coming back to the customer-centric ethos, again, talking to particularly our larger customers who run contact center businesses, on the whole, they feel they can actually get away with um, when, when they have bumps and bumps and things go a little bit wrong and the customers call them pretty, pretty upset so long as the people who are dealing with those customers have the right attitude and are perceived to be helpful, perceived to care, and perceived to value that customer. Um, again, the Goodwill Pot can help to, uh, to do that. Again, it's a bit like Stephen Covey and his emotional bank account. It's uh, just, you know, you, you put in some deposits over time so you can withdraw when you need to. One of the things I really like about the way that you um, on board new customers as well as you give them that 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 credit essentially for a free add-on. Yeah, we, we absolutely do. So when someone signs up Horizon, we uh, we give them uh, only on 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 light it's you know, five pounds of free credit, but that's ten percent of the you know subscription value. Uh, and so it's it's something we didn't have to give them. It helps them to get started with the product, but it's also just uh, uh, starting off that. Um, customer-centric balance where we want to help our customers not just take money from them. And so, I mean, something else that you said that's really resonated there is that you know, when the customer calls in, and we know that a lot of inbound calls to you know, business to business organizations or even B2C, you know, in some cases we've heard over 50% of the inbound is about invoice. It's about um, a problem with billing um, specifically. Um, and the fact that, as you've described, I mean, you, your customer service are able to see the monthly recurring revenue and the, the oh, Absolutely. absolutely. So, so our guys, um, we use, tend to use the Salesforce dashboards uh, for that, so our guys can, can see exactly what subscription someone's on, uh, whether they're a new customer or they've been with us a while. Uh, they can look at things like recurring revenue. So I'm actually going through a bit of fun right now, just, uh, again, educating our guys here uh, in terms of recognizing the value of customers who are potentially on, you know, for us, what is a relatively low uh, figure as a monthly recurring revenue because exactly of this, this annuity value uh, compared to historically where we've had um, one or two, you know, a handful of much larger enterprise customers. Uh, it's important to get that mindset where, uh, you know, we, we have growth plans. We plan to grow a percentage of our customers onto higher value additions of the product. And it's all about that retention and growth, uh, even for a customer that seemingly is quite small right now. Well, it's great to hear. I mean, it's that customer centricity, which is you know, which is really interesting for us, and it's very, very clear from what I've seen as well. That you absolutely have the customer right in the middle of everything that you do. Um, so, if we can move that one on, uh, Geraldine. Sure. Yes, John, we have, and may I just uh, remind everyone briefly that you may ask questions via the chat function anytime. Thank you. Carry on, John. No problem. Okay, so this, again, is one of the key takeaways I've taken today, one of the probably most important uh, ones. And again, this is something which has come through, you know, both from our side, uh, but also from some of our larger customers as well, is being able to recognize um, when someone has churned, what was that? What were the characteristics of that customer in the lead up to that churn? So, uh, what behaviours did they exhibit? Um, and it's not necessarily again all, always the ones you would expect. If someone's maybe got some additional credit, they might start spending or doing transacting more transactions. 
they might just think, okay, I want to give this thing one last shot before I give up on it. So you, you might see increases in what would seem like positive activity um, before it goes down again. But I think each industry will be slightly different. Certainly in the, in the uh, retail finance sector, again, it may be if someone is, is paying off their loan in its entirety, uh, that may well be a signal that this person is planning to move. If someone is however, spending a whole bunch on their credit card, it may be because they're planning to churn to a different card, which gives them an interest-free period. So it will be different industry to industry. But being able to pull in data and analyze that data retrospectively to understand the reasons for churn is important. Um, what you can then do, uh, again, as part of that, is looking, at, okay, well, which of these causes are actionable directly by us? Um, so it might be, again, that you've recently done a change in your terms and conditions, or you've changed your pricing, or you've maybe downsized your call centers, and so your call queue times have gone up. All those things potentially are actionable by your management team. So the key there is to be able to pull in this data, to be able to quantify it, to show trends over time, to get your senior management team then to buy into uh, the effect this is having on your, on your business. So Justin, I mean, that's, 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 that's great content. I mean, one of the things that, um, I mean, I've got a question in terms of you know, PCI compliance. Obviously, Zora is PCI compliant. We hold that credit card information for you, but you're able to pull down and run reports based on understanding, for example, you know, somebody's credit card is due to expire in you know, 30 days or 15 days. How do you guys use that information? I think it's really important. Uh, any opportunity to engage with the customer is, is great. Um, but when we have uh, is issues like that, where we can then proactively recognize the card's going to expire, or maybe even reactively if, if a card uh, has the payments not gone through, that opportunity to engage with the customer, uh, not just to get the new card defects and so on, but then just to look at their again, product holdings, look at their behaviors, look at how much they've been spending, and have a very front-footed dialogue with them about how you're getting on with this. You know, I noticed you're on the uh, 200 pound subscription, but you're not using half of the, uh, the features. So maybe for you, going back town and a downgrade for now will be, uh, be the right thing. Or maybe you know, you're bouncing off a ceiling of the number of subscribers you can have in your Horizon subscription. Should we talk about uh, uh, moving that up? But uh, be able to have a, uh, again, a, a customer-driven dialogue, which is not necessarily sales-led, but gives you that opportunity to re-engage with the customer uh, based on the information, management information you have about how they've been using the product uh, can really help to uh, increase loyalty. Great. So if we, if we can move to the, to the next slide, please. Yeah, so, so you've, you've got our, our plans to uh, focus on excellent customer service, and we've got our staff uh, trained up and educated on the importance of doing that. Uh, we've got our ability to measure loyalty and understand the uh, detrimental effects that uh, China can have on our business. So what do we do when uh, we recognize that uh, maybe someone's loyalty score is decreasing? Uh, whatever the metrics are for your business, you need to have an ability to recognize when a customer is at risk of churn, uh, and then putting that customer into some kind of retention campaign. And again, the key attributes there are the psychological ones. You know, customers want to feel valued and cared for as an individual. Um, they don't want to feel like they are just a, a number at the top of an invoice. So it's then looking at can you use business process, whether it's software, whether it's different scripts in the contact center, is it some different offers you can feed to this person to change that attitude uh, more positively. Um, again, some of our customers do, do random things. Um, see, well, what to the customer seems like a random event just to start shifting that, that attitude shift on that customer. So not always linking positive actions with something the customer would associate with being that they deserve to be rewarded for. So maybe rather than just giving people uh, a, a new uh, free allowance 
on an annual anniversary or when they get to a certain spend threshold, maybe just look at saying thank you or it's their birthday or their spend has increased by a certain percentage or whatever you think might be relevant to your business, but things that you, the customer will be surprised by. So you're actually dealing with churn on behalf of other businesses. Yeah. So you've got, you have your own churn defense strategy, but you're actually deploying in, in real time, in the real world, that same strategy for Absolutely. we can see Absolutely. the example and, customer and, here. That's and so here's, here's an example. I mean, this, this one was actually a bit more of a technical solution. Um, this was one actually for O2. There's, a, I think, a case study on our website. But uh, O2 had a quarter of a million customers uh, at risk of churn. I think there were customers they had acquired and needed to get onto an O2 tariff. So here we were looking at, well, okay, well, what's the best way we can convey the value of that offer to these customers to get them onto that tariff rather than them churning to uh, potentially a different operator? Uh, given that O2 only had these guys' mobile numbers, nothing else, uh, their options were pretty limited. So. They decided the offer was they're going to give these guys a, 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 a bolt-on, an add-on product, um, which they thought would be appropriate for this, this customer set. So what we did was looking again at a, a multi-channel, but importantly, a personalized uh, marketing approach for this. So we actually did an A-B split. And again, one thing that we haven't really dwelt on here is kind of marketing-type approaches like A-B split testing for testing your pricing points and so on. And again, being able to change those very quickly is important. But what we did here was maybe split around um, a call to action. So we, we sent a text to a percentage of the customers uh, with a call to action, which was to text back in to take up an offer. Uh, another percentage, we sent out a text with a call to action, which was to call our uh, automated IVR voice dialogue. And we looked at uh, the response and conversion rates uh, across those two different uh, calls to action. Uh, one thing we found was that overwhelmingly the uh, conversion rate was massively higher uh, if you let people come back into the IVR because what our IVR does is it's not the touchstone hell that uh, most companies give out to front end their contact centers. It's very personalized. So we recognize the caller's mobile number. And from that, we can then dip in real time into, into our, our databases and our customer databases to greet the customer appropriately and to give them the, the offer that they have called in to, to redeem rather than trying to get through 15 different menus and levels of a static IVR dialogue. And by even though it's through IVR rather than the human person, just be able to convey in real language the offer, what it entails, let the customer listen to the terms and conditions, give them a choice of different appropriate offers they could take. Uh, we managed to retain 61,000 of those customers when O2 had pretty much uh, worst case assumed that they might all be, be churning. Uh, customers pleased, they put a massive amount on their bottom line. Um, but it's really through this uh, multi-channel personalized dialogue, making those customers, recognizing them as individuals, making them feel valued to that business. 20, 24% is a, is a spectacular. Uh, number there, 61,000 from a quarter of a million is, is, is really impressive. Yeah. Um, and I think clearly you, you eat your own, you clearly eat your own dog food, I can see that. Yeah, we do. And, and the recipe will be different for different businesses. So having a well defined retention campaign where, again, the customer doesn't know they're going into a retention campaign, but they are in one. And what will start happening over a period of time is they will maybe start getting more of these um, seemingly random things which make them think, oh, that was cool. Uh, or maybe they start, um, you know, when they come into the contact center, maybe our IVR detects that, you know, they've been flagged in the CRM as a risk of churn. Maybe they've been flagged through, that through some information that sits in Zora in terms of reduction in monthly recurring revenues. Either way, we can pick up the data in real time and then adapt the inbound customer experience, uh, maybe bumping them up the call queue maybe uh, not giving them uh, ads or content around something we know they recently unsubscribed from, but personalizing that to that customer, making them feel a little bit more of a personal relationship uh, with, with the brand.
plan. Um, so the recipe will change, but having a well-defined um, retention campaign is very important. So as we, as we move to the next slide, um, I mean, one of the things that really kind of stands out for me from what I've seen and how you guys operate is really that kind of it's customer centricity first and foremost, but it's really a, um, every opportunity to talk to a customer is a moment of truth in the business. Absolutely. Every opportunity to talk, every opportunity to just go that extra mile, and that's right across from our account management guys through to, to our service desk and where it, where it needs it, you know, the, the senior management team. We, we, throughout our history, we found that uh, some of the stickiest situations we found ourselves in, where you know, things are being escalated to top table on, on both sides, whether it be through something we've done or whether it just be through a change in situation, uh, that ability to get a different but meaningful dialogue with the customer, so long as you can convey the impression that you genuinely do care about them and their business, and that you're in this for the long haul of the partnership, um, every opportunity can be turned into a positive. So, so we've been looking at some kind of stuff like uh, retention campaigns and what things, what happens when things go wrong. Well, on the other side, you know, the, the great way to to mitigate uh, churn is to start sending customers into sales. So again, doing that kind of you know these heroic things, um, going the extra mile for someone, whether it's just calling them out of the blue, to just to just to have a chat, ask how they're getting on. So the kind of account management stuff that uh, again can always slip when there's downward pressure. Um, asking them personally, you know, what do you think about this? What can we learn from you? Which again is invaluable to our business. But again, making that customer feel cared for and valued. Um, again, surprising them. Um, again, customers these days are pretty savvy. Uh, we, we need to be very careful around some of the psychological implications of what can happen. And this is I'm, something I'm fascinated in. Uh, for example, we've seen things like Facebook where blunt instruments where someone likes you on Facebook and you give them a voucher or they do a negative tweet about you and so you're straight back on to offer them a discount or whatever. We've got to get away from these blunt instruments. We're okay. back into things where we're rewarding and promoting good customer behavior and where we have the opportunity to just reward people out of the blue. Uh, maybe recognizing things like their social influence uh, as well. So we look at um, maybe rewarding the customers who can create the most buzz about that experience. Um, maybe a tactical approach you want to take, depending on your industry. But just looking at, rather than customers that you know, might, might expect on the annual anniversary of their subscription they're going to get something, or on their birthday they'll get something, or maybe if they start spending more, they would expect high levels of discount. Take it away from those fixed metrics onto things which are more personalized to that individual. So maybe that a customer is only spending £100 a month with you, and there's other guys who are spending thousands. But if that customer is spending £100 a month, increases their spend by 10%, which will be in the noise for the bigger customers. You know, to them, that's a meaningful increase in their business with you. So being able to reward that customer and recognize that extra investment that customer's made in you proportionately to reward them for it. Again, you'll get benefits in terms of social buzz, in terms of sentiment, in terms of telling their friends, and so on. And so things like that, the ability to analyze data on a very customer-centric basis is, is vital. It's, it's lifetime value of a customer. Lifetime right? value. It's, it's, we're seeing it more and more in, in the subscription economy when the customer is in the middle of everything then you know, essentially when we t we're talking about churn today, you know, the net effect of somebody having a bad experience and telling 10 other people, yeah. and somebody having a good experience and telling two or three, you know, then the, the, the numbers stack up, right? So it's certainly, it's really interesting to hear how, how, how you guys achieve that. If we can move, just roll forward, Jordan. Hello? Thank you. Okay, so, uh, this slide is really taking through to some of that. Um, yeah, Horizon is multifaceted. Uh, so this is the kind of cycle of many of our customers go through. You're looking at their, their uh, loyalty and marketing campaigns, looking at requirements, looking at designing those experiences and doing all the creative around it. But then the, you know, our Horizon SaaS product helps them then with 
so presenting all this content through the different channels, um, pulling in all their CRM data for targeting the messaging, you know, pushing all the outbound uh, marketing and, and offers to these guys through the channels that each customer wants to deal on, uh, handling those personalized inbound responses across landing pages, across the voice automation, and so on. And then some of the analytics uh, around those behaviors and what you can learn from that to uh, uh, adapt to how you want to engage with that customer in the future. Part of the analytics within Horizon, and then also pulling in data from you know, Salesforce and Zora. Um, so really the key of it is pulling all these different multi-channel touch points into a single place, you know, a single view of the customer, a single version of the truth that you can then uh, use to uh, adapt your, your business and those those one-to-one -one engagements. And essentially what you're talking about here is this is a continuous cycle. Absolutely. Absolutely it is. It's, uh, it's, it's learning, executing, uh, reviewing, learning some more. So if we can move to the, the, the I guess, the final talk track slide, Jody. Um, really what I'd like to try and do is kind of you know, bring um, what we're talking about here. So to really net this down into, into one single slide, essentially onboarding new customers, how you get them on, and then essentially how you move someone that's maybe gone and signed up for a free trial, as Justin showed me today, and then how you upgrade them to pay, how you then you know, sell them add-ons, how you upsell them from, you know, in your case, light up to enterprise to buy the middle tier, and then renewals. You know, renewals is a, is, is a moment of truth. And essentially, by moving the customer absolutely to the center of everything that you do, subscription models, as it says on the deck, will clearly let you monetize those relationships. And it's always that constant review. It's not some linear process. It's this constant review of the customer when, you know, at any point on that, in that cycle. You know, when, when the customer calls in and they want to understand that the invoice they've got, or they've got a billing request or a billing uh, query, the ability to deal with that must clearly give you guys quite a lot of power. Yeah, I think it does. I think it's all about this um, trying to understand the reasons that person has, has called you or is engaging with you, understanding their state of mind, uh, looking at the balance of uh, you know, their behaviors and the product holdings and so on they have, just to whether it be through some of the automated tools or just through, again, giving your, your contact center guys information at their fingertips to uh, resolve those issues and uh, just recognize that customer and their individual circumstances is, uh, is very, very, very important. Well, great. Um, and, and thanks very much, Justin. It's fascinating to, to listen to your business and actually I'm, I'm lucky enough to be here and see it as well. So I guess, Geraldine, um, I'd just like to thank you again, Justin. Um, and I guess we'll hand back to you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for wrapping up, John. Uh, thanks, Justin. Great presentation. Great um, case studies. Thanks. So to the audience for joining, I will personally send you a recording link of the webinar this coming Monday. Have a great afternoon all. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a good day.